Uh, this year, the suspension is based off of the rock system. It includes a differential bar and the body is made out of aluminum. We will include front wheel steering to improve maneuverability while traversing the course. The capabilities of this system, basically, it relies on the diameter of the wheel or the clearance and the basically the rocker bogey, which allows you to have contact basically on the ground at all times. The drive motors will be housed inside the wheels to protect it from obstacle impact. The wheels will be coated with line X, which will provide durability as well as keeping a low weight. Task. The team will be using an auger to convey material up to a rotating sample bin. This sample bin will be divided into six partitions. Two of the partitions will be used for the first five centimeters of material that will not be tested. Another two partitions will be modified for on-site pH testing and the remaining partitions will be used to store materials for further scientific tests. The system is capable of collecting samples, subsurface temperature, and moisture down to a depth of 19 centimeters. So an issue with last year's design is that we actually had to move the rover after drilling holes to align sensors for subsurface temperature and moisture measurements. With this new design, we can now align the sensor and the auger along a common axis so we no longer have to move the rover between these two operations. This year for the robotic arm, we are increasing its strength while keeping it lightweight. It consists of three linear actuators with feedback so that way it has increased positioning. It also consists of curved plates and steel bolts to hold it all together. The simplicity lessens the weight of the arm and the moment effect it has on the suspension. For the gripper, it is composed of ABS plastic and it will be light, durable, and robust. The prongs have a curved indention with a T-flex design which will allow them to grasp a variety of different sized tools. It is powered by two Dynamixo servos that provides a current feedback so that the gripper can apply the appropriate amount of load to the object being gripped. Feature plans involve using Hyperworks to optimize the arm plates for even more weight deduction. It is capable of simultaneously operation from both a handheld operator and a base station so that if the operator is on-site operator needs to do something, the base station can see or see any status of an operator. The rover is controlled by a handheld device, touch device, via a 900 megahertz link. It is capable of controlling all aspects of the rover and receiving feedback from the rover as far as system statuses and other relevant information. The rover has three Arduino Megas which serve to perform in a simultaneous function. One serves as a primary core, which communica manages communication and propulsion functions, driving, steering. The second manages just the science experiments. And the third manages all robotic armist functions. In terms of uh, communications between low level and high level, we are using various serial protocols to uh, communicate between the two. So it will give us the ability to send packets to and from low level and high level. The high level uh, utilizes the data in two various ways. Either it uses the data and sends it over directly to the base station for analysis, or the data is used to be internally analyzed and sent back as a command. In terms of autonomy, the communications between low level and high level is very crucial because the low level provides various data ranging from accelerometer and uh, gyroscope data all the way up to high level, which provides uh, camera data and uh, LiDAR data in combination of the two, which allows us to uh, plot a proper course to the uh, GPS location. We plan to uh, improve communications between the uh, rover and the uh, base station, and also improve communications between the Odroid and the Arduino systems to allow us to have more uh, precise sensor data. Our Proof of Life team proposes that life on Mars may be identified through the sequencing of nucleic acids via next-gen Illumina de novo sequencing. Through this process, genomes, whether novel or similar to ones on Earth, may be identified and compared to life on Earth. Due to the expenses of cutting-edge technology used in de novo sequencing, we will initially utilize Sanger sequencing to demonstrate the feasibility of identifying samples collected on board. We plan to isolate and identify 16S ribosomal DNA, a gene found in all bacteria currently known. To do this, we will collect and purify nucleic acids from a soil sample, then PCR and sequence the sample using primers targeting the 16S ribosomal DNA. After sequencing, the sample will be placed on a phylogenetic tree and compared to other genomes available through genome databases.